understand the International Monetary Fund, it is best to go back to history. We come to 1944. The war is coming near to an end. The Allies were determined not to have the war finish and end up in the mess of the 1930s. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 Allied and Associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. The key institution set up was the International Monetary Fund. And the purpose of the fund was to have a bank they could turn to for short-term borrowing to serve the short-term trading interests of the winners of the war. United States Treasury Secretary Morgenthau heads the American delegation. To be discussed are plans for the stabilization of world currencies. Same time they set up the World Bank to provide capital for the rebuilding of Europe. You have to remember what we now know as the Third World didn't exist. There were a few major powers, each of which had a large empire. We had no voice, we had no presence, we just were part of somebody else's power structure. You ask whose interest? Ask the question, who set it up? America found that when they became free, they soon were in every kind of financial problem. Because they didn't have the economic strength to, shall we say, make it on their own. They needed time to build economies that could then make it in the world. When you see what all the food from abroad costs, you realize mm. that the food production to feed ourselves in Jamaica is not only a matter of opportunity for you, it's a matter of survival for the nation. Comes 1973, there is a world convulsion caused by the oil price increases. All of a sudden, we are having to find sums of money we had never dreamed of before just to make ends meet. Now, what can you do? First of all, you go to the private banking system and you see, well, can I get a private banking loan? Because I'm strapped for cash, I need some support, and I'm having trouble paying my overseas bills. When the private banks won't lend to you, uh, then you've got to do something if you're leader of a country. And typically what you've got to do is to cut back your spending in some way and try and get more money so that the impact of those cutbacks are not as severe as they otherwise would be. And it's at that point that you generally come to the IMF. We are not for sale. And tell them any time they are willing to deal with an honorable Jamaica based on principles, sovereignty, pride and dignity, then we will talk the investment of the money. Bear in mind, this is a country literally beginning to unravel because it cannot finance what it needs. Because you can't have no penicillin in the hospital. You can't have no wheat to make bread. Uh, and we would say, yep, that, that's true. Uh, we understand the crisis you're in. Uh, and we need to fix the underlying reasons. Uh, for that crisis. And so here is what we think needs doing. What you really need is to sit down with them and say, look, can I work out a five-year program? And in the meantime, I'm strapped for some cash, so can you help me up front get out of the cash bind and then put it in the context of a long-term development plan? And they said, no, long-term development is your problem. We are here only to see who do you owe the monitor? Why are you in a bind? I will lend you some money in a very short time frame at full interest rate to get you out of the bind. And they then impose upon you tremendous restrictions in what you can spend. And then we reach agreement on a set of measures on the budget, on the exchange rate, on monetary policy, on interest rates, on banks, on maybe privatization, and say, yep, we think this could solve your problem. And you say to them, but if I do it that way, when I finish repaying you, I'm going to be in the bind all over, because this can't solve my problem. They say, not our problem. 
The whole idea was to set conditions which the government could not meet. And when the government failed to meet them, you would have to renegotiate a new loan in which the conditions became tighter. So the IMF didn't say, cut out this education program or cut out this health program. What the IMF said is, you must spend only so much money on health and education. And the implication of that was that you had to cut out some programs. Essentially, what the IMF wanted us to do was to devalue our currency. That's the first thing, to make our dollar cheaper. They needed to expand their exports and uh, diminish their imports. And the best way of doing that is to make foreign currency more expensive. And since our society is so heavily dependent on imported food, imported fuel, imported books to go to school, imported medicine, when we devalue, the cost of those things we import go up to the citizens. And as a result, the economy today is much more under the control of foreigners, not necessarily through direct ownership, but through the mechanism of debt. In the 1970s, we owed $800 million. By the end of the 1980s, we owed $4 billion. Nowadays, we owe $7 billion. So the debt is rising, and all the time the debt is rising, our capacity to export, to produce, is getting less. In Washington, they just looked at us and said, no, 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 your inflation last year was 18%. And under the positive inflation rate theory of interest, that means we're not allowing you to lend your farmers our money, which we lend you, at 12%. You must charge 23%. I remember I took two trips, it was, to Washington to say, it is wrong, it is wrong economic policy, it is wrong socially, it is wrong to say that we must force the farmers to pay that rate of interest, or you won't lend us the money. Typically, in an IMF program, there'll be, there'll be some assumption about the way interest rates are going to go. And I remember saying, which are you who are going to face an American farmer and tell him that to borrow something for his farm, he must pay 23%. I said, they'll run you out of, out of the White House and out of Congress. Oh, that's their, their business. We are dealing with your business. <laughs>